At Monday, we successfully forfeited a commercial tenant's lease. That is because we had a new tenant wanting to come in. Uh, this tenant had always wanted to move out because they'd stopped paying their rent. In fact, they haven't been paying their rent for the last six months. And we were trying to come to an agreement with the tenant where when we found a new tenant, he would surrender and the new tenant would come in, right? We'd get him out of it pretty quickly and jobs are good in. For the tenant, for the landlord, all is great. Anyway, when we tried suggesting that to the tenant about eight weeks ago, go eight weeks ago four weeks ago six weeks ago I can't quite remember sometime over the last two months uh the tenant came back and was pretty damn aggressive and said uh I'm not signing a surrender I don't want the rent arrears left over my head I'm gonna sue the landlord blah 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 just as a little point here when people have got their backs up against a wall for money they will lash out right? If they think that everything has gone wrong financially and they're about to lose it all, they're going to lash out. So expect that if you go to a tenant or anybody for that matter, and you say, hey, I would like you to pay up this arrears or these arrears, or you owe me this, you need to make a payment. Just remember that if they haven't made a payment, chances are that they are in a tough circumstance. And if they are in a tough circumstance, that means that if you start making demands that they can't meet, they are going to lash out. So expect the grumpy email, expect them to start threatening legal action, whatever it is. In this case, the tenant desperately wanted to sue the landlord for think removing some of their goods which actually hadn't happened so I'm not sure where they got it from but they're clutching at straws because they're thinking well if I come back in a combative way then maybe the landlord may, might back down and I'll have more time to make these payments this tenant obviously because of the amount of money he's in arrears didn't have the money to even hire a solicitor you know there's He's not going to do that. And quite frankly, we just needed to put him out of his misery and get a new tenant in and get on our way. Didn't really want to accept that. Felt like we were using solicitors. But of course, as landlords, if you're draw drawing up surrender documents, you need to be drawing up surrender documents. And you need to make sure that you are... Um, your solicitor is doing it properly so that everything is done by the book. What you don't want is to get something wrong and then the tenants start getting, actually having a leg to stand on, right? You don't need the tenant having a leg to stand on. So get your solicitor to draw these things up. Then from there, send it over to them. Um, but in this case, this solicitor, this tenant, sorry, didn't like the fact that the landlord had, involved solicitors, was feeling quite threatened, didn't want to sign a surrender agreement, so instead got very combative, making threats and emails, you know. Obviously, he was worried because he didn't have any more money coming in. He didn't want to pay the outstanding arrears. He felt like his back was up against the wall, and also we had said, look, we're going to put a CCJ against your company because you keep promising us that you're going to make a payment and you don't make a payment. Anyway, his threats just got more and more and more. And so we thought, okay, do you know what? We will stop interacting with you. Stop interacting with you. And from this point, we'll let the arrears run and we will just forfeit the lease. So when you forfeit a commercial lease, by the way, you need to make sure that you're speaking to your solicitor and you know what day you can forfeit from. Whilst non-payment of rent for most leases, and check your leases, it will say in your lease if you can forfeit for non-payment of rent, right? If you can forfeit for non-payment of rent, 
then and you want to do it, go to your solicitor and say, hey, can I forfeit this lease for non-payment of rent? If they say, well, they will say yes, but what they'll do is they'll ask you questions about when was the last time you spoke to the tenant? When was the last time you sent a rent demand? All that good stuff. The reason that they're asking is because if you want to forfeit, you have to make sure that you haven't spoken to the tenant or given any indication that you would still like that lease to be in place. Otherwise, you can't forfeit. You really have to, at the point, send the rent demand and just leave them. And if they don't pay or they don't come back to you or they're not being um, helpful in any way, shape or form, at that point, you can then forfeit the lease and usually it is 14 days plus seven days so usually about 21 days no 24 days after the rent has been due so we had to wait I think it was okay no you wait 21 days but you can't forfeit at a weekend or a bank holiday you have to forfeit on a business day and um, so we sent out a rent demand on the 1st of April. It wasn't paid. The lease was forfeited on the 24th of April. A new tenant is going in next week. There was already tenants lined up. They're desperate to get in there and start trading. So that has worked out really, really well. Now I can probably hear some of you through my speaker saying, Natasha, what happens if there's possessions in there? Good question. You have to store them securely and give the tenant uh, the ability to come and move their stuff out. Your solicitor will provide you with the advice of how long you should safely store the items for before you can dispose of them. Right. So that is something that you just need to be aware of. You do have to safely store these uh, items and at some point it's like well the tenant's not coming back for them so okay you can be rid of them there we have it now I would only do forfeiture if you have got another tenant lined up or you've got some other way of making money and you know that that tenant's not going to come back into the premises in this case this tenant doesn't have any money to get back into the premises because what he could do is apply to the court for relief from forfeiture the court are going to demand all of the rent that he owes plus all the bailiff fees for the forfeiture plus any legal fees for the landlord and if they pay that then they can be given the keys back and they can go back in and their lease resumes chances are though with this tenant it's not going to happen this tenant actually doesn't have any money so you're going to need to check that out as well because what you don't want is a tenant applying for relief from forfeiture and then going back in the property so those are some notes forfeiture why do we do it in this time this tenant just hasn't been paying this tenant is a specialist tenant he is a graffiti artist um, and there is not much demand for graffiti artists doing murals at the moment, mainly because the who's spending that kind of money when everything else is really tight. So that is uh, that case study there. Forfeiture is your last resort. There are other things that you can do. But if you've got a new tenant who wants to come in, uh, I would suggest you get that new tenant in so that you've got someone who's paying you the rent.